Get set to match up with the Atlanta Falcons. Here's the kicker, Zane Gonzalez, ready to get this one started. And off we go from Cleveland. On the return, here's Justin Hardy. And not a great return here. He'll make it back only to the 10-yard line. second down it's not always as trade as that team wanted it more than the other but on that play it actually was true they were faster to the ball off the play fake to Freeman it's Ryan and incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And this opening drive not going to plan. This is now third and 13. Now it's Ryan, rolling to his left, looking downfield for Jones, and incomplete, he can't hang on, would have been a nice catch, instead it brings up a fourth down. But one thing's for sure, when you get a big receiver and you trust him downfield, you got to give him opportunities to go up and get that 50-50 ball. And he is a darn good big receiver, unfortunately that time didn't work out, nice job defensively. Here's Matt Bosher now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. Taking it about the 36. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Browns will take over first and 10. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. Come on, let's go! Ohio! Ohio! And they'll bring the big tight end across the formation left. 
Gets it to Gordon. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Coleman, the man in motion right. To throw is Taylor. Flush to his right. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. A good play there as the Browns strike for 16 and a first down. And there's Tyrod Taylor doing what he does best. Look, he's taking a few lumps along the way, and some people haven't believed in him. But this is where he excels, outside of the pocket, making plays. As prolific with his legs as any quarterback in the league? I would say yes to that. Taylor on first down. To the right side and complete to Njoku. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. And this offense can get their tight ends involved. They can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. So here we go, first and 10 now. Complete. It's a dangerous pass. That's what it was. And it brings up second down. Second down following the incompletion. throw again he dumps it to Hyde and he'll be brought down at the 21 just shy of the 20 in the red zone call it a gain of five and just like that it's third down so many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game get your best players into space with the football in their hands that's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner get him out in the flat and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field Third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Play clock winding down. A first carry now. This is Johnson. It's a pickup of four, but they're still a yard short here with fourth down, fourth coming. So many things going to making a good play on defense. In this situation, just not being blown out of the way was a big start, and then a nice tackle to finish things off. puts this one through and the Browns are out to a 3-0 lead so they get the ball first here in front of the home crowd under the lights and they get three points out of it and there's something about a night game isn't there a little extra snap a little extra crisp in the air what a terrific way to get things started a little extra excitement a little extra dazzle for the home crowd and it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29 yard line Falcons taking over on offense in just a second. And, you know, this year ended in disappointing fashion. Now, last year was the ultimate version of heartbreak. But if you're a Falcon fan, was this one? This one was tough to swallow as well, wasn't it? It certainly was because, let's be honest about it, losing in the Super Bowl, I don't care how you lose, you were in the Super Bowl, you were playing for it all. This team was supposed to be as good or better. Ultimately ended up 10 and 6, found their way in the playoffs, but didn't get the deep run as they had the year before. So you're exactly right. For Falcons fans, that's a tough one. But this is a team that's built to be. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Travis Carey. And he'll score. Touchdown, Browns. Now that was a beautiful play. A pick six. How would you punctuate something like that, partner? What do you mean with an exclamation mark? Exclamation mark, a big word. What would you do with that? Ampersand? I like it. Zane Gonzalez on for the extra point.
It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. I want to give a hat tip real quick, Charles, to J.J. Watt before the possession switches here. Walter Payton, NFL Man of the Year, and they totaled up how much he helped raise for hurricane relief, $37 million. Incredible. Hurricane Harvey, which really hit the Houston area in a big way, and his original goal was $200,000. <laughs> so congratulations to J.J. Watt and all the people who participated. And Greg Olson of the Panthers, Benjamin Watson of the Ravens, both tight ends, also nominated and finalists for the most prestigious award as determined by the NFL, the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. This one complete to Mohamed Sanu. And he's brought down after a good game. And a nice gain of 21 yards. He missed on his first three passes, was 0 for 3. Now gets a connection, maybe that'll get him going. Yeah, it wasn't a time for panic, but there was some concern because once you start in a certain pattern, you're wondering, can you get out of it? And that flips the other way, too, when you're throwing it really well. In this case, now he's got his first completion. They think he might be off to the races. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. And he fires one that's intercepted. He's picked off at his own 47. And they take over. They'll set up shop at the 46-yard line. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. Browns offensively getting ready to take the field again. If you take a step back, Charles, last two years for the Browns, one in 31, worst two-year stretch in the 98-year history of the NFL. Everybody knows that story. And the playoff drought at four. And he's going to go down. They sack him back at the 42. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. Back with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The Browns with a football to begin quarter number two, but they face a second and long to start things out. this time. Four yards on the completion and it sets up a third down. Third and long, it's Taylor. Looking for Landry and it's intercepted. Devondre Campbell, the linebacker, picks it. And a terrific return as he brings this one all the way back to the 30. Well, it's third and long and you've got a few different ways to play it offensively. But this is not the type of offense that's going to wave the white flag. They're going to keep chucking it. And this time, it results in an interception. CD, I want to get your thoughts on some potential free agents this offseason before we change the possession here. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Miles Garrett in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big. But sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? 
typically a blitz. And even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, that allows your blitzers to get there. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. Now it's Ryan. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. It'll be a pickup of just two, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. They'll run for it. It's Freeman. And this is going to come up well short as they stop him on fourth down. Dan Quinn's guys unable to come through there on fourth down. And this Browns defense stands tall. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop him short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel Awesome, going to the bench after that big play. Well, before the possession switches here, I had written down that I wanted to talk about some of the awards this past season in the NFL. We know Brady was the MVP, but Todd Gurley, Offensive Player of the Year. How about that for a bounce back? Many were questioning whether he'd had a sophomore slump the season before. Didn't even get to 1,000 yards. Was a dominant force in 2017. How about his teammate Aaron Donald yeah. on the defensive side? He took home Defensive Player of the Year award. Yeah, very impressive. They had both sides of the ball. Sean McVay deserves I think you would agree of coach of the year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what he did for the Rams when they went from last in the league in scoring to leading the league in scoring and winning a division title. And how about the New Orleans Saints? Rookie of the year, offense and defense. Alvin Kamara on offense, Marshawn Lattimore on defense. A good pick up there, 26 yards. On first down, it's Taylor. That's complete. It's Gordon. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. On second down, Hyde. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Big yardage there for the Browns, 18. Throwing now, Taylor on first down. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. A gain of six there on first. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. They'll give to Hyde. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Carlos Hyde, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Browns add six to their lead. And there you go, nothing really too complex. Block, keep your assignments, let them run it in, they did it. Fundamental football, good blocking, beats good tackling on that play, and result, touchdown. That time, a six-play drive, and it was capped off by a Carlos Hyde touchdown run. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. He'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Two minutes remain here in the first half. More from Cleveland after this. fake here on first down and it's a short one here complete to his tight end and they'll get him down here at the 23 just a yard on the catch there it'll be second and nine well the strategy was evident there get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback who's usually going to win that one the tight end but not there not in this situation how about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Emmanuel Ogba. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. On 
third down, Devontae Freeman. Just a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll mean a call to the punt team as it's fourth down. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. There's Matt Bosher now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This is fielded at the 27. So possession goes over here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. So the football switching hands here in just a second. And, you know, Tom Brady, just to go off on a tangent for a second, may have lost the Super Bowl. But third MVP this past season and what he did at age 40, really something, right, Charles? Absolutely phenomenal. Ended up beating out Todd Gurley, the running back for the Los Angeles Rams. But he would have traded it for a Super Bowl win, don't you think? How about this? The last nine NFL MVPs to play in the Super Bowl that same season, 0-9. Yeah. Came all the way back to Kurt Warner in, what, 1999, where he won the double? We were going over that stat earlier. That is hard to believe. But he would have been the MVP had the Patriots pulled that one out. Yeah, he still has five rings, though, five Super Bowl titles for Brady. They'll throw on first down with Taylor. That's in Joku over the middle. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. It's Taylor escaping the pressure right. He's going to let this go deep. Back up. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Josh Gordon as time expires in the first half. And the Browns add on to their lead. And just before the half ends, the prayer is answered defensively a disaster there. I know often we're surprised when this actually works. I mean, the excitement level goes way up, but maybe we shouldn't be because I know as a defender, you've got to play the ball in this situation, but you can't interfere with the receiver. because. And just like that, on we head to half number two. Teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. And his throw is incomplete. Jarvis Landry, the intended receiver, and now it's second down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Now Taylor. Nowhere to get away, and down he goes. Taylor is sacked. Grady Jarrett coming up the middle, gets him there for a loss of about nine. 
He didn't get rid of the football there, took the sack. Although that's easier said than done. He can't just chuck the thing sideways into the seats. No, he really can't because you're not afforded total protection as a quarterback. You have to get outside of the tackle boxes as defined by the NFL, meaning wherever your tackles operate normally, get outside of that. And the ball that you throw has to get back to at least the line of scrimmage. Otherwise, you're facing intentional grounding call. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. Well, he bounced up after taking a sack and took a shot downfield. I think a lot of us thought maybe he'd run draw in that situation. Instead, tried to get all back in one play. Yeah, third and long, thought he needed the deep pass, couldn't connect it. Maybe he was hoping for a penalty downfield to give him the yardage they needed. Cole quit on to kick as he sends it away. That's pulled in at the 32. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Joe Schobert. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. This interception will go on the record of the quarterback. But as a receiver, you've got to understand where you are in the field. Middle portion, you know it's going to come in hot. Square your body to the quarterback and be ready to make the catch. In motion right comes Gordon. On first and ten, it's Taylor. Flushed out right. He's got a man. It's Corey Coleman. 23 yards on the play. And they're going to speed things up here. Let's go. One, nine. Flex round. Flex round. Ohio. Ohio. Flex round. Flex round. They go play action here on first down. Eluding the pressure right. Coleman has it here right side. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. From the red zone now, here's Taylor on first down. Buying time to his left. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. On second down, here's Taylor. Forced out to his left. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. Tech McKinley able to get in there and drop him behind the line. Come on, let's go! Brand 38! Brand 38! Ohio! Ohio! Flex round! Flex round! Flex round! Third down, Carlos Hyde. And they'll get him down right around the 16. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. Let's go! No, no, no! Off, off, off! Flex round! Flex round! Watch twist! Flex round! Flex round! You got tight! You got tight! You got tight right there! Ohio! Ohio! They're going on fourth down. It's Taylor. That's to his running back complete. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Carlos Hyde. He scored on the ground and through the air. And the Browns are pouring it on. And when a Hail Mary is completed for a touchdown pass like that, I think any defensive coordinator just puts their face right into their hands. I don't think there's any doubt about it. And I don't have stats in front of me. I don't have the empirical numbers that say 
that in recent years the Hail Mary pass has been completed more than it has been, but it feels that way, doesn't it? And I know the defenses are spending more time on it. I think the biggest mistake they make is that they play everything from behind the receiver. I think they've got to start getting people in front as well to try and knock the ball away. And the lead will grow by one more. A drive that time of six plays, and it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll probably wish he'd reconsidered here. It will cost him 10 yards as he's down at the 15. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. off the interception he'll look to throw in trouble here and down he goes back at the eight yard line Larry Ogunjobi with a great push up front he picks up the sack and a loss of eight Second down, here's Ryan. Dancing to his left. Now he'll let it go on the run. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked off by Travis Carey. And a huge return as he'll take this one all the way down inside the 30-yard line. Not the best of plays there as a quarterback. You're right-handed, rolling left, trying to throw it that far downfield. I remember a coach of mine saying, son, that's the equivalent of trying to get the car keys out of your pocket with your opposite hand while you're trying to run. You just can't do it. Coleman, the man in motion right. After the interception, here's Taylor. This one complete to Coleman. To the end zone, touchdown, Cleveland. Corey Coleman, 29 yards. And the Browns take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash this one in. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high-flying plays, but a good number of them play running back at some point in their career, and that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone. A nice, tidy little drive there, getting the ball in excellent field position and only one play to score it. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. The Browns defense getting ready. That interception, the last go-around when they were out there, four turnovers now for this unit. Pretty impressive. And how happy are they to actually run back on the field? Most of the time, defenses want to get off the field, but when you picked off four passes... They want to stay out. They want to stay out there and not just pad their stats, but really give themselves a game to remember and a game to play off of the rest of the season. And they'll be looking for turnover number five now. 